All right. Hey, 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 hey. We're going to do a live stream because, guys, some things are happening that I really want to get you tuned into. So I'm going to wait and just see because I did not think I was going to do this today, but I'm throwing it out there. I'm going to see how many people are going to be able to log in and see this. And so, hey, hopefully it uh, it's a winner and people actually join. Hmm. Well, I'll give it a few minutes. All right. All right, Snarkilla, you're in the house. Hey, 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 Boda. Good to see you. Good to see you. Wayne Carter, blessings to you too, man. I got some good things to talk about tonight, so I thought I am just going to go out there and do a live stream and get this stuff out because there's some really amazing things happening in this space and literally you're looking at both ends of the stick here and guys, it is time to bring some serious clarity to this space because there is so much going on and the stuff and the confusion of what's happening is really wild and you just got to take the pulse of where we're at and I'm going to share with you my personal perspective from being here before. Judy and I were here before. We ex What's going on now, it feels so much like it did in the past and so I want to get this out in a big, big way. Now, guys, I'm going to share some stuff with you in this live stream to kind of show you how we're seeing both sides of the coin being flipped and how we're being toyed with mentally and how you can avoid what's coming because, guys, I think they're really going to try to do something big time here to literally shake the dickens out of this ecosystem in a powerful, powerful way. Now... Um, I want to, now I want to go over there. Now I know not everyone is going to be on to see this right away and that's okay. Cause you know what? We'll keep the live stream up there so that they can actually see it. But guys, you know how I love to do articles at night and stuff like that. Well, I want to show you a couple of articles right here and we're going to go over them and I am going to give you a little bit of, um, you know, my kind of like take on what's really going down. So I'm going to cut over to these uh, these articles. We're going to go over them one by one. And then I'm going to share with you something that I see in this space. And that's what has prompted me to do this live stream. Because, guys, I want you to make it. I want you to make it. And you have got to be able to recognize this stuff and spot it for what it is if you're going to make it. Now, let's just go over here. So what we're looking at right here is an article that has come out today. And they're talking about this critical day for XRP. And let's just go through the article a little bit. So it says, critical day for XRP, Ripple versus SEC. Pre-trial conference could drive to a $2 rally. And you get down in here, and this is what it actually comes out and says. Ripple, a key player in the global payment sector, is active preparing for an upcoming court case against the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, the focus of the lawsuit is on Ripple, whether Ripple conducted unauthorized security and transactions involving its cryptocurrency. And what they're really talking about here is this upcoming pretrial conference that was due April 16th and where they could be discussing settlement options and through the the SEC likely to appeal related rulings and on and on and on. And you get down in here and it starts talking about all kinds of different stuff and prices and all this and that. Now, what I want to show you is this, because we could get into the nitty gritty of the article, but that's really not the point that I want to drive home. So you're seeing this whole push of this critical day for Ripple on April the 16th. Well, guys, check this article out here. Ripple's top lawyer makes important clarification as a legal battle with the SEC rages on. Now listen to this. This is coming as Stuart Alderati. Ripple's top lawyer has clarified that there will be no pre-trial pre, pre conference. Stuart Alderati, chief legal officer at Ripple, has clarified there is no pre-trial conference with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission scheduled for April 16th countering some misinformation on social media. The conference will not take place because Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and co-founder Chris, Chris Larson were cleared of all charges by the SEC, Alderati explains. So now, guys, I'm going to kind of switch back here so that we can get back out of there. Now, the point that I want to drive home here is this. 
right now we are at a very, very, very critical juncture in, you know, right close to this Bitcoin having right near what's going on in this space. And boy, the the atmosphere is literally electric with what is going on. And of course, we got all this geopolitical stuff happening around the wide world. And of course, we just experienced a major correction over the weekend. Guys, the narrative that's going to come out, and I'll tell you what, you are going to hear all kinds of conjecture, flip side this, flip side that, you know, misinformation coming out. You have got to be as sharp as a tack because I genuinely believe they are going to pull something out here that is going to literally cause even some of the long-term holders of XRP to be really shaken up. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know, of course, exactly when it's going to happen, but boy, can I feel it now. I was there back in 2020 and this market was just starting to really heat up and we were actually making some big moves. All of a sudden, out of left field comes this SEC lawsuit. Well, I'll tell you what, the price of XRP literally dropped from, what, 50, 60 cents down to 17 and a half cents. And I'll tell you, a lot of long-term term holders that had been accumulating for years absolutely gave up. They completely capitulated in a massive way. Now, what happened next was truly amazing. Within four months, XRP hit $1.97. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a big number, but it represents a 1,200% return. Now, I want to show some parallels to this from what happened in 2017. So, in 2017, it was the same thing. We were seeing all this tinkering along and a big time dip happened. I mean, it spiked down there. A lot of people were shaken out and they got, they completely capitulated because they were waiting for so, so long to see something major happen. Then guys, it wasn't too much longer after that. This space scented XRP did a 65,000% move, literally go from where it started in its low to all the high of $3.84 most folks miss that. Now, think about this. At the time that that happened, only one exchange in the United States was listing XRP in 2017, and it was Poloniex. Well, what happened in 2021 in the next bull run after we had gone through the bear market there, came back up, and of course, we had this SEC. Well, in that, in that environment, do you realize XRP was delisted from every exchange save up? Well, so here we are again, only one exchange in the United States selling XRP. Do you realize that 1,200% move bang? Do you know where most of that transactional volume came from? It came from South Korea, guys. And right now, if you were to go out and research it, you are going to see that South Korea is heating up and big time. Now, here we got a situation where XRP has been relisted on practically every U.S. exchange and even some where it wasn't listed before. We got the decision out of Judge Annalisa Torres that XRP in the secondary market is not a security. And what's going on now? Well, guys, every kind of mud that can be slapped against the wall is and the confusion is out there in big time. You're seeing literally, thank goodness, Stuart Alderati came out and clarified this because the conjecture that was going on is absolutely we're going to get a settlement and they're hyping it up and all this and that. And the thing is this, we all want settlement. I believe settlement will eventually come. Will it come right away? Guys, I'm not sure that it will. In fact, it feels like it did for, for Judy and I right before that space there. I just believe that we could see another drop down there. If we do, I believe that that is going to represent the absolute bottom. And guys, I don't want you to get hurt. I want you to get out there, really kind of analyze this information, adjudicate for yourself. And if you see something like that happen, are you responding in anxiety? Are you responding in fear? Because let's remember something, guys. I love to share this in my coaching. This whole space is measured, right, by fear and greed, isn't it? And the thing is this. No good decisions when it comes to our finances are ever made based on fear, whether that's fear, uncertainty, doubt, right, or fear of missing out. Neither one of those are good for us. We have got to look at the long-term fundamentals of what this world is transitioning into. Now, 
The greed side of that is this. Is greed a motivator? We know that it is. Of course it is. But guys, it is also a deceiver. And don't kid yourself. These players in this space, they know how to pull every string that you and I can possibly think of to manipulate how we feel and respond. You just got to know that. That is part of the game that they play. And even long-term holders had been shaken out of their positions right before this whole thing literally blew off and changed lives. And guys, I feel that we're right at that point prepices that that is about to take place and we could see a capitulation event before this thing literally explodes and changes everything now think about it in this capacity here we are on the absolute threshold of a major global conflict potentially with this whole israeli iran kind of deal going down and the price of oil man people are calling for a 200 dollar uh, per barrel you know price for oil and when you start to think of where the world is financially, I'll tell you what, war as a generator for, you know, um, it is a machine. Let me just say that war is a machine for profit and money printing galore. Always has been, always will be. These powers that be have utilized these situations in the past, literally to kind of kickstart an economy like you would never believe. And guys, it is a major moneymaker. Now, having said that, I genuinely believe that what we're witnessing is just, a st the events are just too coincidental. And I genuinely believe that you will watch the, all of these central banks are going to turn on the presses like they have never turned them on them before. And guys, I oftentimes liken it. I think I, I follow that up with this. Back when we were dealing with this whole deal, right? The whole wide world has basically come to a screeching halt. I mean, every industry that you can possibly think of from manufacturing to shipping to service business, you name it, nobody was out there doing anything. Remember all the pots and pans that were banging? The only industry made doing anything, I guess, was the medical industry. Thing is this, the world entered into probably one of the greatest bull runs that it had ever seen. Now, that was not stimulus money. I hear that all the time. Oh, it was, you know, people just taking their stimulus checks and investing in crypto. Come on, guys, it was not. What drove this market was the institutional money that was coming in from the, and the, and the, these central banks buying it up like no tomorrow. Don't let yourself get absolutely buffaloed. You've got to know your convictions. You've got to know what you hold. That's why I'm out there sharing this because guys, we are so close. I think we're literally weeks away from something absolutely significant in this space in a big way. And I'll tell you what, nobody wants to be the person out there that is saying, hey, you know, we could see another big downturn. Who wants to come out and say that? But guys, I'll tell you what, if we do, Judy and I, I'll tell you, our position is we are going to look at it as an opportunity for us to accumulate in ways that we have not done yet because we have been here before. And I believe right after that, it is going to literally go nuts. That is exactly what I believe, especially considering we are literally days away from this Bitcoin having. And from what I can tell, Man alive, do I ever think it's going to be a big deal. Now, that example of those two sites, and I'll show it again one more time, just so that for anybody else that has joined in, because I really think this is a big tell right here. And let me just go back here. So here's the one article. And in this article, what they're saying is, hey, oh, well, today, you know, this, it's going to be a critical day because, you know, they're going to be going to this pre-trial conference and discussing all these options and sending out a major, major mes message. Then you got this article, the exact opposite of what was just reported there, where Stuart Alderati comes out and says, hey, 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 there's no conference taking place because, hey, Brad and Garlinghouse and Chris Larson were cleared of all charges and the top two executive, the scheduled item, which was shared on popular member of XRP community is outdated since it was set before the charges were dropped in, in October. And guys, this is the deal. When you start to see this level of confusion and all this going out there, now we've always had the FUD, right? That's always been out there, and we know that. This is different than that. This is different than that. What you're seeing is a level of misinformation to keep you as confused and unsettled as they possibly can. That is exactly what happened last time. Now, think about this. Back there in 2021, before 
you know, or sorry, 2020 before the SEC sued Ripple. What was going on in this XRP ecosystem? Well, guys, that was a big push for the flare snapshot, wasn't it? And what was going on is a lot of people were absolutely just gobbling up XRP. It was a massive run because they all wanted to participate in the flare snapshot because it was going to be a one-to-one -one airdrop. So however many XRP you held, that's how much flare you were going to get. And so a lot of people were pummeling in. And think about this, the SEC knew that. Oh, did they know that in a big way? And guys, the narrative and the confusion in the space was wild. And then bang, they drop this big lawsuit. Knowing all that was going on there, the very agency that's out there supposed to be protecting you and I, right? Did they protect us? No, there was no warning. There was no nothing like that. They just dumped it on there. But the narrative, guys, it's that is how it's kind of like the litmus test or whatever you want to call it. Check in the wind. You got to know the temperature of the environment we're in. I really do believe it feels so familiar to me. Now, you can check with other folks that were there. And if you were there, you can, hey, in the comments here, you know, put it out there and, you know, just share your view of what it was like for you and how you felt during this time. Guys, I really do believe something big is going to come and it's going to be it's going to be a shakeout for people but after that i think almost immediately after that a short time later i think it is going to go nuts now having said that i do believe when we reach the top of this next bull market it's game over it is game over you're watching the dow at such high levels right now it is truly terrifying when you look at the 100 year chart of where we are and i think when they roll this over that is exactly what's going to happen the market is going to crash at that point and i think that's when they're going to transition us guys right in to this new digital economy and it is going to in my view represent the greatest life transfer wealth transfer in the history of mankind i absolutely 100 percent believe that i am not just saying saying that excuse me i literally believe that i believe it why because of the fundamentals that's why the fundamentals are screaming for a new system around the wide world you're watching distributed ledger technology take take bites out of these you know networks like it has never had before and in fact i think it's going to swallow the internet whole to be sure and you can witness it guys you see the bank of international Science. if you've never gone out there and really researched it by reading these white papers to see what they have planned, you know, for this new financial system, you have got to do yourself a favor and go do that. Go do that. Go do that. Because it will open your eyes in a powerful, powerful way for where we are in history. We are literally sitting in a place in history most people have never, ever been you know, and I'm not, we're not just talking our parents, our grandparents, we can go back generations have never experienced this. We are literally at a transitionary point when it comes to monetary instruments that we have not yet seen since the invention of paper money. And that is going way back there. And if you really wanted to, you could go back all the way to the stamping of coin. What's going on now is a major, major shift in the wide world. And that's what's going to change everything. It's going to be amazing. Now, let me just get on here and see who's on and just uh, kind of see if I can't get out there and answer some questions. Now, if you've got some questions, throw them at me. I'm here. I'm going to stick around for, you know, just a few more minutes, about 15, 20 minutes. And we want to get out there and answer some of the questions. So if you have questions or you kind of have an opposing view of what I just said, you throw that up there. That's absolutely a okay. So let's see. Now we got a lot of great folks on here. You know, uh, I see, uh, see Snarkilla, Boda, Wayne Carter, Steve Marshall, Becky Hayes is in the house. Drew 82, HJ Luke, Lucas, uh, Thornton. Um, Hey, we got some folks from Australia in there. PWKK1. Praise the Lord. Hey, I love Australia. Been there. Really amazing. Eric Alejandro, uh, busted knuckles. Wow. Hey man, I suspect, uh, I think maybe you were a boxer or something busted knuckles or maybe UFC fighter, Scott, uh, North Carly, Thomas Thompson, XRSB spotlight, uh, Joel, you got Andy over there, Gareem Davison, um, you didn't miss much Gareem. I, hopefully I recount, retook everything in there. Uh, Joseph call Rick Ramirez. Um, Hey there, that's awesome. From, uh, Playas de Rosarito, BC, Mexico. 
All right, uh, stuck in the parada. Uh, Becky Hayes again. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to go down here, and if you've got any great, you know, questions to throw out, just throw them out here. Glenn, kids, Cisco D. Yeah, yeah, maybe they will. Maybe they will. That is a possibility um, whether Judge Torres will have to decide. And if that's where it goes, then that's where it goes. We are, look, I'm here for the long haul. I know what it is. We know what we hold. We're not really afraid. I, In fact, I think if this gets down to the wire, even if it went to the whole way to the Supreme Court, then my genuine belief is that Ripple is going to absolutely prevail. Absolutely prevail. The reason I believe that is when you look at the conditions of the Howey test, they did not meet any of the prongs. And it was the SEC that asked Judge Torres to adjudicate that based on that information. Now, when it comes to this whole penalty phase where they're wanting $2 billion, there was no disgorgement. The disgorgement comes in when people have suffered great loss. Well, most of the people that they're talking about, the institutional investors got XRP at such a low price that they're not in any pain whatsoever. And so if there's no discouragement, hey, there's no interest that goes along with that. They were wanting 800 and some million in discouragement and 200 million, you know, in the interest on that. And then they want an additional 800 million as another, you know, slap in the head on the way out the door penalty kind of thing. Guys, I don't think it's coming down that way. And hopefully we do get a settlement, but I just am out there sharing. Look, you are seeing some absolutely contradictory terms being thrown out there. And this is the way they operate. It's called misinformation. And it's done in such a way so that it keeps you and I unsettled and confused. And that's how they manipulate this market. It is a psychological, right? It's the psychology of a market cycle right there. Hey, hello from... Uh, Oregon there. Um, let's just take a look here. Okay. I'm trying to see if we're going to get, if we have any, okay. All right. Here's some questions. Now, Jason J, do you think the BIS will distribute the ripple stable coin to the banks and the IMF will distribute distribute ripple stable coin to the world countries? Well, you know, I don't think that's really how it will go down. I think the Bank of International Settlements, of course, is uh, their clients are central banks or too big to fail businesses. And of course, the IMF is, um, you know, they're the ones that kind of have the, you know, special drawing rights and that type of thing. And I do think that we are going to start to see, you know, what's going to come about is an agnostic, you know, rural reserve currency. The U.S. dollar, as far as I'm concerned, and the world reserve currency status is absolutely dead. We just have not had the funeral yet. They have lost the petrodollar. Most Americans don't even realize the significance of that event, but it will be a historical thing that I believe will come out. And at that point, I think the world is not going to look for another global country or a country as the world reserve currency status, like it was with the British pound. And before that, you know, the Dutch and all that. And I don't think it's going to be the Chinese or Russia, anything like that. But what I do think is going to happen is we very well could see an agnostic, you know, digital asset that is being used as a world reserve currency. Could XRP fulfill that? Potentially. We don't know. But I do think it is going to be distributed ledger technology based to be sure. So I do think that, um, well, you know, this is the thing. Mark's asking, he's saying, hey, if the dollar is going to heck, should we sell our XRP into dollars down the road? Well, the deal is this, and I always think about this way, Mark. You know, if you took $100 today, what is that $100 going to be, you know, five years down the road? Well, it's still going to be $100, isn't it? It's what will that $100 buy you five years, years down the road? It's going to be value. Now, we may get to a place where we're not even having to liquidate our XRP because it in and of itself is a monetary instrument. The only thing is, it's not a legal tender. It's not a sovereign currency, but it is a monetary instrument. Let me explain that. Monetary instrument has a bunch of attributes that go with it. One is that it has to be you know, a store of value, right? That's one. The second one has to be a unit of account. You got to be able to measure it, right? And the third one is it has to be utilized as a medium of exchange. Well, for sure, XRP fulfills all those. It is a store of value. Unit of account. Well, there's a million drops in an XRP, right? 
Is it a medium of exchange? Absolutely. In fact, I like to bring it out all the time that there are people who are paid their salaries in XRP right now, and you can use XRP to literally pay municipal taxes in England and other places around the world. You can use XRP for so, so much. So is it a medium of exchange? Is it a monetary instrument? Yes, it is. Now, the only deal is this. It's not legal tender. That's the difference, you see? And a lot of times we think of a monetary instrument as only being the legal tender. That is not so. Think of gold. Gold has been God's money from time immemorial, thousands of years, hasn't it? Hey, is it a store of value? Well, you better believe it. The central banks are gobbling it up like no tomorrow. So it's definitely a, cent uh, you know, what about, a, what about a, a unit of account? Well, we measure it in weight, don't we? And a medium of exchange, for sure. You could take gold to any country on earth and it will have value. And the thing is this, it's agnostic, right? It's not just one little place. And so you do have monetary instruments that are not legal tender. Think about that. Um, now let's just take a look here. Okay, so Kevin Neely is asking, with Caleb and Brown, did you set any target orders or just call them when you were ready to sell and how fast was the price? Yes, I have set target orders with Caleb and Brown and I've also just picked up the phone and talked to my broker and bam, you know, they get those market orders out almost immediately, right? And you can, well, when you're doing talking about target orders, what you're really talking about is a limit order, right? Where you set a price that you're willing to buy or sell on. And if that price hits, you know, depending on the amount you want to buy or sell, you know, you, you know, that trade gets executed. And the deal is this, when it came to selling, Hey, look, you know, they just put the money. They have your ABA, your routing number. They sell the asset. Bang. You can withdraw your, your cash right into your bank account. Bam. Just like that. And it has happened. Now I have sent money. Interestingly enough, I'll share this. I have sent money over to Caleb and Brown and I'm using my local bank here in the United States. And I remember Judy and I went in on a, I think it was a Friday, a Friday after Friday. Yes, it was a Friday morning. We went in and we had sent a significant amount over to Caleb and Brown. Well, they told us it probably wasn't going to hit them until like Monday or Tuesday because of course with the SWIFT system and on and on. Oh, he's like, okay, we understand that. That afternoon, I had my broker, Billy, call me and said, hey, we got the money already. Well, I'll tell you what, it wasn't just a small little sum. It was a significant amount. There's no way that SWIFT did that. No way. Guys, they're already using distributed ledger technology on the back end. They just have not communicated it with the majority of folks. So that's something to think about right there. Sheila Stewart has a question. If the SEC is able to close the lid on XRP for the states, what happens to Canada and the rest of the world is working with that? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> you know, the thing is, and I don't think the SEC is going to get to do that. Why? Because XRP in and of itself has been determined not to be a security that is not even being appealed. But second to that, a lot of jurisdictions like Canada, like the UK, like Australia, like Singapore, like Japan, on and on and on, have already determined that XRP is not a security. And the thing is this, Ripple can go away. Ripple could completely disappear and XRP would still exist. Mm -hmm. It would because you see XRP and the XRP ledger are a digital asset technology that is decentralized. Now, a lot of people say, oh, it's not decentralized because Ripple holds it all and they control the nodes. Well, if that's your definition for what's not decentralized, then I guess, you know, Bitcoin is not decentralized. Because, hey, you got a few people that hold the majority of Bitcoin, Michael Saylor being one, you know, with Michael strategy or micro strategy. Of course, BlackRock with the ETFs now hold a rock load of Bitcoin. Well, if you took, you know, three to five of those big ETFs that now hold almost the majority of the Bitcoin, does that mean Bitcoin is not decentralized? Of course it doesn't. It just means there's some people out there that hold a significant amount of it. But that doesn't mean it's not decentralized. So don't worry about that. I, in fact, I do not believe that that's what's going to happen here in the United States. But even if it did, the rest of the world could transact in XRP and XRP and Ripple would just move out of the U.S. And I think it would be one of the stupidest things that the United States government could potentially do, you know, in, in, in hindering itself in this new global digital economy. That's what I genuinely believe. Um, let me just see here. 
Well, what do I think the price per XRP will be after everything is done with? Well, you know me. I quote a lot of price predictions that folks make, and I report those, but I don't make too much price predictions because, you know, the reality is this. Nobody really knows, but I do believe because, number one, think about this. You're talking about an asset that is measured against a dollar. So let's say I said, oh, well, XRP is $1,000. But what is a dollar worth? Have you ever thought of that? I mean, you might see it's like the whole game, did gold go up or did the dollar go down kind of deal. I think XRP, its primary basis is the value that it holds. So, I mean, really trying to nail a price, you know, what you're really trying to say is what will it be valued against the dollar or other fiat currency? Because listen, XRP in some countries around the world is already over a buck, isn't it, right? Because the value of that currency is being measured against. That's what you got to think about. Do not just think about the price against the U.S. dollar. I'll tell you that right now. Because XRP's value, as far as I'm concerned, transcends this fiat currency system. So now... Um, Hawaii Rider, my wife and I watch you every day. You're awesome. Thank you. Well, hey, I'll tell you what, this community is really awesome. And that's why I came out today to do this live stream because I care about this community and I know what it felt like to be living in that circle of confusion back in the last run and how many people were just literally shaken out of their positions when all that confusion was going on only for about a week or two later for this thing to just send it like crazy. Guys, stay on top of your game. That's what I would say. Um, let me just see here. Yep. Gareem Davidson. Great. Thank you for saying that. Sent my sister money from the UK to New Zealand. Takes five working days. Was done in 24 hours. You better believe it. They have got the infrastructure already going on. They have got it going on. Um, yes, I did find my old hat right over there. You know what? I thought about auctioning it off at one time. And Judy says, no, no, it's too nostalgic for our family. You got to keep it. <laughs> so I did find that. Um, all right. So Jake Smith, real estate team question with Caleb and Brown. Can you only wire money back to your country when you sent them from, or can you use accounts? You can use it as long as you're able to demonstrate those accounts are genuinely yours, then you could send it anywhere. That is my understanding. So it doesn't matter. It's not where the money came from. It's where the money who, where the money is coming from in terms of whose money it is. Because look, I could have accounts. I I do. I have accounts in banks in Canada. I have accounts banks in banks here in the United States. I could send the money from Canada or the United States. And as long as I'm able to demonstrate that I am the custodian of those accounts, and if I held an account in the UK, they would wire my money out to the UK if they did. You know, if I wired it in from Canada to the US, they could send it as long as I'm able to demonstrate you know, because it's the whole anti-money laundering deal. They want to make sure that it's going to the same person, same legal entity. So that's there. So that should be good. Hey, K9 Bruto, thank you so much. Um, and Jason J, I appreciate that as well. All right, so let me just take a look here. Um, Redemption Salvation. Hey, that's a great username. I love that. Salvation was redeeming for sure. Um, continue present. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. 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 Uh, emotions like figure. Uh, yep. Can make Yes. And that is exactly the point that we're out talking about tonight is a lot of these, you know, things, this news that comes out, guys, think about it. A lot of cases you are watching the psychology of a market happen in one Oh one real time. Right. And they're playing with your emotions. Now, how do you take the emotion out of it? A lot of people think, well, you must bifurcate your feelings and have no emotions. Not at all. It does not mean that you are not going to have feelings. Of course, you're going to have feelings. You're a human being. It's just you're not making your decisions based on those feelings. Now, that takes discipline, right? It takes discipline because you are just, oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. I've had to fight it myself. When we saw that first dip there, I was thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, this is it. This is it. And then it dropped even more, even 10 cents more. Now, yeah, we took positions at different levels in there and dollar cost average. But because I'll tell you what, it was so tempting to think, oh, my goodness, this is it. 61 to 50 some cents. That's got to be it. And, you know, you're thinking if I miss this dip, what a tragedy. And then it even dropped to 41 cents. Well, guys, 
That's the deal. That's the whole thing when it comes to the dollar cost averaging. You take a little bite here, a little bite here, a little bite here, and you start building that position because it's that fear of missing out that can really get a hold of a lot of people. And you start, what happens is you stop making rational decisions and you start making emotional decisions. And what you want to do is feel the feelings but make the decision based on the conscientious understanding of what you're doing. That's risk tolerance. That's why you need to be out there really researching it for yourself because too many people are going to be making decisions based on someone else's conviction and price predictions and not on their own what's going on in here. That's for sure. Well, Javier, uh, he says, will XRP be the money everyone transacts and knows once it's it's in full smoke or will we use well i think we will not be using usd cad or aud either one i think all of these uh, fiat currencies are going to be gone and i do believe that we'll be dealing with uh, you know central bank digital currencies and xrp is a bridge asset between those central bank digital currencies the bank of international settlements right now is working with ripple to solve that interoperability problem you go to ripple's website they will literally show you for a fact that that is exactly what's going down absolutely they do russ robert i was saying that earlier yes i do i do believe that we will probably see another correction and i think the one that's coming is one that they want to shake people in such a way you know, that even long-term holders that have weathered many storms might be even freaked out about. That's what happened in 2020, you know, when Judy and I were getting in with this whole thing, right? They shook a lot of people out. No one had, were expecting that, bam, down like that. And what happened, you know, and when the SEC sued Ripple and the price of XRP went just south from 50, 60 cents to 17 cents, boy, a lot of long-term holders literally capitulates happened every single bull cycle you check the charts out and you see if you do not see a major wick down just before this space literally took off it has happened almost every single time and that's why i'm getting out and sharing that because it's not just what we're in you know in terms of the digital asset but it's where we are in the in and basically in terms of the season of where we are right and you've got to put all of these things together and really understand. Now, go out there. You make up your own mind of how you're going to react to what goes down, right? Of course, I can't tell you, oh, yeah, you better hold on when you feel you need to sell. I mean, but for me, that's how I take it. That is exactly what I think. Now, I sure hope they do have an agreement behind the closed doors. But in all honesty, I don't think it's coming out right away. I, I, I just don't feel that. I, I think something's about to happen here. Now, if I'm wrong, then I will own that, guys. I will own that. But I'm going based on what I experienced, my own personal intuition of what I've seen, and how I'm reading this market. Remember, there's three kinds of analysis here. You know, we got the technical analysis. Certainly, we got the fundamentals. But sentiment analysis, you've got to really pay close attention because it can change just like that, just so, so fast. Well, I don't know about that. You tell me. So Jay Savoni is saying apparently there was a settlement yesterday. Well, where's the where's the evidence that that has taken place? I'd love that to be true. I really would love that to be true. But I there has been no evidence. And in fact, you know, when we were sharing this article right here, okay, and I'm going to share it again for those who may have missed it. Ripple's top lawyer makes important clarification as legal battle with SEC Larry rages on. Stuart Alderati, chief legal officer at Ripple, has clarified there is no pre-trial conference with the SEC scheduled for April 16. Countering some misinformation on social media, the conference will not take place because Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and co-founder Chris Larson were cleared of all charges by the SEC, Alderati explains. The two top executives were initially accused of abiding and abetting Ripple and securities laws violations. Guys, that's the deal. And yet, here we have another article saying the exact opposite, that, yep, upcoming pretrial conference on April 16th could discuss settlement options. Well, guys, it is not happening, and that's the deal. And this is why I'm coming out and sharing this live stream today, because a lot of people are going to get absolutely dragnetted by the level of confusion that is being thrown out into this space. Well, let's, you know what? Hey, if I'm wrong and they have made a settlement, 
I don't know where that information is coming from because something that absolutely vital would be sealed and solid. There's no way that would pass the lips of Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, or anybody at Ripple, Stuart Alderati, absolutely no way that would ever come out. And the SEC, are you kidding me that they want to have that kind of nod on your life? Because guys, I'll tell you what, if that was true and the information genuinely got leaked, it would affect this market in such a massive way that it would be insane. Just think about this. I'll give you an example of that. Remember when someone had come out and apparently had said that BlackRock sponsored an XRP ETF? What happened to the market with that information? Man, it just went crazy. And what happened? And what ended up happening when we found out that that was a bunch of hogwash? Do you know how many millions upon millions upon millions of dollars of P traders got liquidated with that phony baloney information? I'm telling you guys, if that's true, what you know, uh, Jay Savoni is saying about this, you know, release, then you you would have already, if that was really leaked and it was true, I'm telling you, it would be affecting the market in a big way. Well, I appreciate that Northern living. That's really, really great. That's really, really great. And yes, Judy and I, we are going to Vegas. We've bought our ticket. We booked our hotel. We got our flights. We got the whole kit and caboodle. We're going to be there to just participate. And if you're there, I want you to feel just as free as you. I don't care if we're sitting down and having a meal. You want to come up and say hello, you just do that. Because Judy and I are there to meet with this community, to interact with all kinds of other folks. And we welcome you guys. We welcome you guys. I really look forward to it. All right. Wow, Brad. Yes, I do. Do you see any correlation between CBDC and the biblical beast system? Yeah, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. And now the reason I do is, of course, because there I was working as a special enforcement officer in the underground economy for, you know, Canada Revenue Agency as a federal officer. And I was with them, hey, man, for about 25 years. So I had seen the underbelly of a lot. And one thing I can tell you, I used to think about all the time, well, you know, there's always been a black market. So why wouldn't there continue to be one? And until, of course, you know, because it's talking about, hey, um, making it so, you know, great and small, rich and poor and all that, you know, wouldn't be able to transact and things like that. Well, the thing is this, I thought that there's always this black market until, of course, the idea of central bank digital currencies where they could turn your money on and off at will. And every transaction is tracked from the very day that that monetary instrument is created to wherever it goes. There is no hiding it. There is no hiding it. Now, that is the deal. That's how distributed ledger technology works. Now, it won't be open for the public like these open public ledgers are, but the private ledgers, guess what? The issuer of the currency would know. They would know, they would know, they would know. And so, yes, I do. I think, and now, does that mean that the first iteration of a CBDC system is going to be the institution of, you know, this whole antichrist type of system? Not necessarily. It could go on for 10, 15, 20 years until somebody really comes up. We don't know. But one thing we do know is that we're, we're inching more and more towards that. I really do believe we're watching biblical prophecy happening right before our very eyes. Uh, let's just take a look here and see. Um, no, I have not, Kyle. And that's a great question. The only reason I have not dabbled in the automated market maker yet is I just don't understand it well enough. I haven't had the time to get in there and really get into the nitty gritty. Now, I know how liquidity pools work and how, you know, fi funding on a liquidity pool works. But the thing, too, to think about is this. When you're participating as a liquidity pool provider in the AMM to, you know, share in the fees and stuff like that, if that's your motivation, remember that as so long as you're in there, your XRP is locked up. If we got a massive move in the price of XRP, you need you can't get it out of there just so easy. You can't just evaporate the whole thing. No, you're locked in there. And uh, you would miss out on that, you know, that level of appreciation and, and on those moves. Uh, let's just take a look here. Well, hey, everyone's got, you know, Hayes is saying 500K of XRP waiting to be sold. Well, I guess it all for, and think about this, guys. I want you to really, really think about something. For every person that is selling their XRP at whatever price, whether it's a dollar, ten dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, somebody else has to be on the other end of that transaction buying the XRP, don't they? 
Now, what do you think is in the mind of the buyer for all these people that are going to have loose hands and get shaken out and just sell into fear? What's in the mind of the buyer? Well, they're scooping it up at a discount is what they're thinking. And obviously, they're hoping to see a profit from that decision, don't you? Don't you? They're willing to get out there and take the risk that you're willing to absolutely run from. After holding on for so long, it's like digging your gold mine and getting there within three feet of the mother load and giving up. That's kind of how I look at it sometimes. Yeah, I agree. Crypto as a side hustle. Too many bugs in A&M. I need to wait and see how it all pays out. Yes, you can do it, Leonard, anytime, but it's not as fast as you think. I'll tell you that right now, having been part of a liquidity thing. You're not going to be able to get it out just as fast as you think. Now, um, you know, you can you'll, go ahead. Go ahead and you try it. You, you just do that. Okay. Um, oh, so Jesus Nerero is asking, honest truth price prediction for later this year. Well, I talked about that already. I don't think about it in terms of, you know, because when you're thinking about XRP and you're thinking about price, what are you balancing that price against? Well, are you doing that against the peso? Are you doing it against the Canadian dollar? Are you doing it against the AUD? Are you doing it against the US buck? Because the thing is this, XRP is going to be valued against assets around the world, isn't it? And that's what it comes down to. So it's not so much what the price is but it's what is the value of it, right? Because, hey, XRP, imagine this. Let's imagine that XRP only reaches 10 bucks, but the US dollar goes on a massive tear and 10 US dollars would be worth 1,000 Australian dollars. Let's say something like that happened. Well, then that's not a bad trade, is it? You know, because your XRP is worth 10 bucks that against any other currency is just absolutely blowing it. But the thing is this, what if XRP, you know, if you validated against, you know, $100 US dollars, but that 100 US dollars buys you a loaf of bread, is that going to make any difference? <laughs> if I said, oh yeah, XRP will hit 100 bucks, but the only problem with that is $100 won't buy you next to nothing. So that's not going to be a very fair deal, is it? So you can't just think of price. And that's what everybody is, that is what they want you to focus on. Price, 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 price. You got to start thinking value, 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 value. That's how you got to think. Um, yes, we want value. We want value. Absolutely. I think the crypto as a side hustle, we want value. Okay. If one has now a Dixie moon need a gray ask this. If one has a smaller amount on uphold, would it be reasonable to be able to sell for a small profit. Well, I, it's not necessarily whether, you know, what's reasonable, what is unreasonable. That really is an individual thing, isn't it? If, you, if I had, you know, some funds on one of these exchanges and I needed the money and it was at a point where I could be selling it and taking a profit because I needed to utilize that cash, then I would take it. You know, I would sell it because I have a need and that's the thing. We can't judge people for whether they it's reasonable and unreasonable in our point of view what they do with their XRP when they decide to do it. I mean, some people, who knows, they're going to have health issues. They need to get out of debt. They have a child that needs assistance, whatever the deal is. And we can't be shaming people, say, oh, that's stupid. I'd never sell my XRP. We don't know what the, their situation is, right? And that kind of thing. Now, for me, hey, I've got a bag to hold and a bag to sell. Now, doesn't mean I'll sell my bag to sell because, <laughs> hey, I've got goals associated with it. And that's the way I kind of look at that. I don't know. I don't know. Construct Destruct says you would be a great high school economics teacher. Well, I'll tell you what. The economics they teach you in high school is more like home economics anyway, isn't it? Hey, you know, how to do this, how to do that. The thing is this. True economics and true economists, I, don't, I think they're a dying breed. Why? Because we're seeing such statistical manipulation in our markets and a genuine economist could know that, but it doesn't matter why, because what we're dealing with is an out of control central bank that is going to print us into oblivion. And that is the only issue. That is exactly what they're going to do. And by the way, guys, stop looking at crypto and stop looking at gold and commodities stop looking at the stock market saying you want to know where the beating heart of all these markets are 
It's in the debt market. That is exactly where it is. That is exactly, because think about this. Every dollar that is issued is a liability instrument, exactly as Augustine Carson, general manager of the, of the Bank of International Settlements is. It is a issuance of debt. They're pulling money from the future into today. That is exactly what they're doing. They're borrowing from time. And they're debasing the currency and they have no problem doing it and destroying the purchasing power of those dollars. And that is their main goal is to inflate. Don't kid yourself. Do you think these central banks are truly committed to reducing inflation? Not on your life. Their very existence depends on inflation. It depends on it, guys. All uh, right, we will have to try. Okay, okay, okay. Well, what do I think about the buyback theory? Well, it might be plausible. J Jew F Baby says, uh, what do you think about the buyback theory? Well, there might be some plausibility to that. I don't think it's right now. But I think at some point, hey, you may see a situation where they are willing to truly buy it back because of the value that it has. And it, I think it would be a handsome uh, reward for us if, if we're compelled to, to sell it. Now, just saying that right there, if we're compelled to sell it. But if we're not compelled to sell it, hey, Ripple's already buying XRP off the open market. They're already doing that. And you know what they do with it? They buy it off the open market. They turn around and sell it to their on-demand liquidity providers. That's exactly right. That's exactly what they do. John McKenzie. Hi, XRP community from New Zealand. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, guys, it is about 11 p.m. my time. I wanted to get out there and, uh, you know, just kind of give you guys some caution because we are at a very, very, very crucial point in this cycle. Very crucial. And you are going to see so much mis misinformation being thrown out there and you're not going to know which way to go in that respect because it's going to be like, which voices, you know, where is, you know, it's going to be so hard to discern that. You got to know what you hold. Get out there. Do your own research, really get that conviction and, and decide what is right for you. Don't let somebody else make that decision. You make that decision. Um, yeah, well, I appreciate that. Uh, Tess Kenny says, I'm an economist and also a qualified economics teacher. I felt so depressed when I looked at the curriculum, the state of the economy in crypto. Yep, I get you 100%. Having spent 25 years in the tax department, I totally get it. Now, Messier says this, and I will address this right here. Will debt be forgiven? Big, big question. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, have a lot of interest in the whole Nasara Jasara. I want to bring out a point on that. Now, I don't have, um, I'm not opposed to the idea because primarily, you know, from a Judeo-Christian perspective that had led rise to our bankruptcy and insolvency legislation where we, you know, give white people's debt, give them, a, it comes out of a philosophy called the year of Jubilee. Now, the year of Jubilee was where all debts were forgiven. Everything went right back to square one after, once every 50 years, kind of deal like that. Now, the thing is this, when you're talking about, you know, this debt forgiveness, do you think it'll be absolutely without any hooks? I don't think so. I really, really don't. And I use a biblical model for that. Back in, you know, we all, you know, when, you know, Easter and the Passover happens, you know, Ten Commandments comes on TV. We all watch Ten Commandments and stuff like that. Well, the whole deal of how that happened, the Ten Commandments, was way, way back when, you know, Joseph was around. He goes down there. His brothers sell him into slavery. He gets in Egypt there. Eventually, he becomes the prime minister. There's a whole story behind that. Well, the thing is this. There was a great famine at that time. And so Pharaoh puts Joseph in charge. And before the famine happened, there were seven years of real, real plenty. And during the times of plenty, Joseph is out there storing a bit away, storing it away, storing it away. When the famine came, hey, they started going into Egypt, buying up the grain that was stored from, from Pharaoh, and they'd use their cash to buy it. Well, when they ran out of cash and the, and the famine was still going on, they started to bring in their livestock, couldn't afford to feed them anyway, so they traded that in. When the livestock was done, well, the only thing they were having left is, you know, property or land, and so they sold the land. Guys, when the lamb was gone, they sold themselves. That's what went down. 
when you think of all this debt that has been accumulated, retail debt around the wide world, and you think they're going to do a reset and completely forgive it, they may very well do that. But I do believe that at that point, you're going to more or less acquiesce to whatever system that they throw at you. You're not going to have choice anymore. You will have given up a lot of liberty for that, you know, relief and, you know, security. I think it was Benjamin Franklin, I believe it was. Maybe I'm wrong. Could have been Jefferson. But one of them said, hey, those that would forfeit their liberty for security deserve neither. Now, that's kind of like my opinion on what that is. Well, you can say keep God out of your money, but the reality is he's in it whether you like it or not. <laughs> that's a fact, Jack. Um, yep, that's right. Okay, so. I, hey, Matt, not only am I coming to the Quantum Summit in Cape Canaveral on June 8th or 9th, I am actually a speaker at that conference and I'm going to be there and uh, cannot wait. And uh, I'm Versan's going to be there. Pat Riley, yes. Dave Lyon, can't wait. That Molly Elmore's going to be there. Jay Claver's going to be there. It is going to be something. Judy and I are coming down there, and we're actually speakers there, Matt, and know Mel very well. And I really enjoy Mel Carmine, actually. You know that? And guys, we've all come from a different walk of life in this space and a different perspective. It's not about, hey, who's right and who's wrong and all that kind of stuff and all the clickiness that goes along with that. We It's united, we stand, divided, we fall in my estimation. And this is where we got to be united. We got to be united. Uh, what is your goal with wealth mine? Be near family and travel. Oh, you're, Okay. Well, you know what? That was our goal. That was our goal. Judy and I, that was our goal. Um, we wanted to be with family because for us, hey, our goal is retirement because we were locked up there in Canada during the whole you know thing going down here. And our children and grandchildren were down here. And we just, you know, that's why we moved. And God provided a way and a means through this digital asset space that transformed our life. And that's why we get out and share it as effectively as we do. So really look forward. Well, guys, I'll tell you what. It's about 10 after 11 p.m. And uh, I can't keep my, you know, sweetheart back over there. Just, you know, you know, just kind of like falling asleep without me there. Because, you know, it's kind of not kind of fair, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to get going. But I'll tell you what, guys. I genuinely care about you. Judy and I both genuinely care about this community. And I want you to be conscientious of all of this misinformation that is going to come at you from both sides, both sides, and how it contradicts and recognize that that is just a, um, you know, indicator of the se season and, uh, and where we're at in this cycle. It's kind of like, you know, being able to gauge, you know, the seasons, you know, you have spring, summer, winter, fall, and you kind of well know by by what the temperature is outside and what's going on in the environment and all that kind of stuff. Well, having been here before, this is a very telltale sign of where we are in this ecosystem. So if we do see a big shakeout happen here, and I'm thinking within the next week or two, I think right after that, we are going to see something that most people won't, and it will be, and the shakeout, should it happen, will be a big one that will really cause even some of the long-term holders to question what their position is. And that's happened before, happened every single bull cycle that has ever happened. And within a week or two after that, XRP has gone on such a tear. And that's kind of how I look at it. Now, history does not repeat, but boy, have we ever seen it rhyme in the past. So guys, keep your ears to the ground. Really do care about you and wish the very best for you. And of course, tomorrow we're going to be out there and doing and uh, doing our coffee and everything like that. And we'll have a great video for you. So really, really appreciate you that those guys that have dropped in and enjoyed this live stream. And so guys, hey, just keep your get witness. Just keep sharp as tax and see what happens in this space. So have a great night and we'll talk to you. See you tomorrow, guys. So. Take care.